Well, good morning. Uh, this is the Saturday morning group called Promise Keepers sometimes, sometimes called Man Up Men As Trees. But basically, we're some guys that get together and uh, read Bible scriptures and have discussions about them. Lately, we've been going through the book of Proverbs. Uh, we're now in chapter 1, verse 20. We're going to start with prayer, and then uh, Tim's going to start reading, and we'll have a discussion. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's truth, and truth sets us free. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us so much that you gave us your word so that we could be free, and it's our choice to participate in learning and, and studying your word, and we thank you for putting it in each one of us, the desire to do that, and with your help of the Holy Spirit, uh, we we invite you to teach us, Lord. Teach us so that we know uh, the way that we should go. And um, we appreciate uh, the time that we have together with you this morning and your word. And we ask you to bless that time so that we become more like Jesus as a result of reading, studying, and discussing your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Proverbs 1, verse 20. Lady Wisdom goes out in the streets and shouts. At the town center, she makes her speech. In the middle of the traffic, she takes her stand. At the busiest corner, she calls out. Simpletons, how long will you wallow in ignorance? Cynics, how long will you feed your cynicism? Idiots, how long will you refuse to learn? about facts, about about face. I can revise your life. Look, I'm ready to pour out my spirit on you. I'm ready to tell you all I know. As it is, I've called, but you, you've turned a deaf ear. I've reached out to you, but you've ignored me. Since you laugh at my counsel and make a joke, of my advice. How can I take you seriously? I'll turn the tables and joke about your troubles. What if the roof falls in and your whole life goes to pieces? What if cat catastrophe strikes and there's nothing to show for your life but rubble and ashes? You'll need me then. You'll call for me. But don't expect an answer. No matter how hard you look, you won't find me. Because you hated knowledge and had nothing to do with the fear of God, because you wouldn't take my advice and brushed aside all my offers to train you, well, you've made your bed, now lie in it. You wanted your own way, now how do you like it? Don't you see what happens, you simpletons, you idiots? Carelessness kills. Carelessness kills. Complacency is murder. First, pay attention to me, then relax. Now you can take it easy. You're in good hands. Wow. Some of this... Uh... Reminds me of my youth. Uh, mm. Some of it reminds me of uh, watching some of the youth that I see around me today, both in the family and out of the family. Yes. Uh, it's, it's so important that somehow when we are impressionable, uh, that someone somehow gets through to us with this message so that we don't destroy our lives, in some cases, beyond repair. Not that God can't repair it, but uh, oftentimes, uh, because of the ignorance that uh, the simpletons wallow in, um, they their life ends up not lasting as long. And... Uh, or, or has a, such a devastating event happen that they can never, you know, proceed to the 
the uh, level of peace that I like that at the very end when it said, now you can take it easy. You're in good hands. Um, relax. You know, how can that's that's so contrary to the the effort of life that is required when you are lacking wisdom you can't relax yeah the uh living bible says there in verse 32 where you turned away from me to death your own complacency will kill you fools verse 33 says but all who listen to me shall live in peace and safety unafraid so i think he's kind of doing the contrast of you know if you don't listen to me you know the verse right above that says uh complacency destroys a fool uh verse 32 says your own complacency will kill you fools then he says but all who listen to me shall live in peace and safety unafraid so all we have to do is yield to the spirit of wisdom and here it talks about wisdom Verse 20 says, mine says, wisdom shouts in the streets. So wisdom's trying to get our attention. And this kid, this young person is not paying attention. He's mocking the spirit of wisdom. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I I think he's talking there to a group of people, but uh, you know, anyone who who is out of bounds with uh, their wisdom. But uh there was I put the living ver uh the Living Bible version up now, and in the other version, when you were reading when it said about face, um, I don't know what verse that was in the other Bible, and I'm trying to find it here. Um, but anyway, that's a that's a military term used in in marching. Would basically, when when the the um, who's given the order says about face, basically it's a 180 degree turn. It's not a, a column right march or column left. It's, it's a, a it's, it's about face. It's 180 degrees. It's, it's like repentance in that it means to completely turn away from the direction you're going and go back uh, to where you came from. Yeah. I think it's in verse 30 where it says, um, you turned your back on me, spurning my advice, it says in the Living Bible. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, yeah, you're right. It's like this guy's going the opposite direction of wisdom, which means he's a fool. And he says up there at verse 22, how long will you go on being fools? How long will you scoff at wisdom and fight the facts? And the thing is, this other translation I have, I don't have it open now, but. what What is it? I'll bring it up. I don't know what it is. It might be the living, but I, I can't remember. But I know the verse and it says, hey, stupid, how long are you going to keep on being stupid? And it's like, wow, this thing's pretty hard on this. On yeah. these people. You know, he calls them fools. He calls them stupid. He calls them idiots. He calls them, you know, and the thing is, he's referring to people that have that characteristic. So if you want to find a fool, look for someone who acts like that guy does in Proverbs 1. Yeah. In the message listen. where it says about face, it's somewhere between 22 and 24. Uh, about face, I can revise your life. So I'll go back up here to the living. 22 says, You simpletons, she cries. How long will you go on being fools? How long will you scoff at the wisdom and fight the facts? Come here and listen to me. I'll pour out my spirit of wisdom upon you and make you wise. I've called you so often, but you still won't come. I pleaded, but all in vain. Wow. The spirit of wisdom is going to be poured out on us if we just yield to it. You know, and that's what a lot of people have trouble with that yielding. You know, they don't want to give up their own will. They don't want to yield to the spirit of God and listen to what he has. And obviously he has all wisdom and the best way to do stuff. Jesus said in John, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
In other words, follow my way because it's the way. It's it's the way. And so many people, nah, you know. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm I'm looking for something that I was just reading in Job the other day, uh, so you can keep on discussing as you. You got any comments, Pat? No, I I think uh, the wisdom is the faith in God. Put it simply, and uh, if we live in God's way, we have wisdom. And uh, but you know, I agree with all this that the proverbs are very important as far as teaching teaching us how and guiding us on what we should be looking for. So. <clears throat> yeah, the spirit of wisdom that's calling out, it's like um, you have the animals out in the wilderness and the babies wander away from the mama and it starts getting dark and then you can hear the mama calling the babies and then you can hear far off the babies answering mama. And then you hear them back and forth when you're out hunting, you could hear them. I know George wrote that book, Hear of the Heart. Besides listening to your heart, you could hear the wildlife and they're calling to each other. And then you can tell they're getting closer and closer and then they're together and they go on about their way. But, you know, the babies tend to, the young ones tend to wonder from the mama. And I don't care if they're deer or, you know, bobcats or coyotes or the cougars, whatever they are. And that's the way it is in the wilderness. They call out and the spirit of the mama is trying to protect the baby by saying, Hey, don't get too far, you know? And that's what wisdom to here. It's shouting out. It's crying out. It says, it says verse 22, that you simpleton, she cries. How long will you go on being fools? And then in chapter two, it says, you know, we're crying back out to wisdom. We're, we're the ones that are crying out to her. And uh, we'll get to that, but that's the thing is, are we going to yield and reverence God's spirit and yield to this stuff that he's trying to reach us with? A lot of people reject it and they rebel against it. And then there, it says in, uh, well, I guess it's chapter five. It says, you know, the, the, the rebel, you know, gets in a situation Um. It says the wicked man is doomed by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. That's Proverbs 5.22. And the thing is, and what does he do? He blames it on the Lord. You know, because he's the one that didn't listen in the very beginning here. You know, the spirit of wisdom is trying to cry out to these guys. And they're not, they're not yielding. They're not obeying. They're not, they don't want to listen to instruction. And that's the very key thing. If you're not teachable, you can't do much with the guy. And I guess my um, my challenge to myself is how do I, you know, not that I have gained all wisdom and not that I have, you know, passed all the tests with flying colors, uh, but my heart is for those who are um, unwisely avoiding the wisdom that they could be gaining through paying attention to the things of God. Um, I, I had a discussion uh, with someone recently, you know, trying to help them understand the the error of their thinking. And sometimes uh, they, they get a, a dogmatic um, position that they s stay firm in, um, not because of wisdom, but because they just want to have their way, and it's it's uh, they it's almost like defiant to the point where that's why in this in this in the book of Proverbs here uh, the writer is telling the reader, "You fool, you know, you idiot, you're, you know, why would you do that? Why would you ignore uh, this wisdom that's so it's in the streets, it's on the corner, it's shouting out to you, it's." is trying to help you. And yet, you know, here we are reading it, understanding it because of where we've come to, but how do we help other people to get from where we were and where they are to a, a little bit better accepting of 
what wisdom has to offer. How do we do that for them? Hmm. I I think it's a decision that each person needs to make. And as long as they're in pride wanting to do it their way, it's like the guys who had that song. I think of, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley and the different guys who sang that song so strong. Yeah, they were good entertainers, but how'd that work out for them when they lived it out? You know, having your own way is a very selfish um, way of looking at stuff. And if you do it God's way, like he said, I have all this stuff, wisdom. And actually, if you go to Proverbs chapter three, one through uh, five, it says wisdom gives five things, a long, good life, riches, honor, pleasure and peace. Uh, that's Proverbs uh, 3, 16 and 17, the Living Bible. It says wisdom gives a long, good life, riches, honor, pleasure and peace. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who eat her fruit. Happy is the man who keeps on eating it. So happy is the person who keeps on eating from the tree of wisdom. And the thing is, it's a choice. You know, we make that choice. Are we going to do it God's way? Or are we going to do it our way? And I think that's what God's trying to get us to choose as you go through Proverbs 1 here. And this person has not choose wisdom. It says, now you must eat the bitter fruit of having your own way. In other words, not... Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. This guy here is doing it his own way. And he experiences the full terrors of the pathway that he has chosen. So I think all we can do, George, is counsel people and love on them and tell them the truth. Then they have to choose truth. Yeah, as, as almost as soon as I asked the question, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me, well, you can pray. And you can pray for them and you can pray for them to receive wisdom. And, and whether we are the ones that counsel them directly, we can be, but somebody else could too. Uh, they could, they could get wisdom any place. And we just need to pray for ourselves to, and, and others to receive the wisdom of God. Um, I'm not sure this is where, uh, and I know it's getting, off the the proverb but um in i've been reading in, in job lately and uh i'm going to read some from job chapter 38 matter of fact i'll go ahead and put it up on the screen as well um thank you job bear with me it was right before psalms <laughs> there we go, Job 38. Um, let's see, I'm not doing a screen share right now, am I? No. All right, let me do a screen share. Job 38 in the Living Bible says, Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Why yeah. are you using your ignorance to deny my providence? Now get ready to fight, for I'm going to demand some answers from you, and you must reply. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you know so much. Do you know how its dimensions are determined, and who did the surveying? What supports its foundations? Who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who decreed the boundaries of the seas when they gushed from the depths? Who clothed them with clouds and thick darkness and barred them by limiting their shores and said, thus far and no farther shall you come, and here shall your proud waves stop? Have you ever once commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you ever told the daylight to spread to the ends of the earth, to the end of night's wickedness? Have you ever robbed robed i'm sorry have you ever robed the dawn in red and disturbed the haunts of wicked men and stopped the arm raised to strike have you explored the springs from which the seas come or walked in the sources of their depths has the location of the gates of death been revealed to you do you realize the extent of the earth tell me about it if you know where does the light come from and how do you get there 
or tell me about the darkness. Where does it come from? Can you find its boundaries or go to its source? But of course, you know all this, for you were born before it was all created, and you are so very experienced. Have you visited the treasuries of the snow and seen where hail is made and stormed? For I have reserved it for the time when I will need it in war. Where is the path to the distri distribution point of life, of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who dug the valleys for the torrents of rain? Who laid out the path for the lightning, causing the rain to fall upon the barren deserts so that the parched and barren ground is satisfied with water and tender grass springs up? Has the rain a father? Where does dew come from? Who is the mother of ice and frost? Or the water changes and turns to ice as hard as rock. Can you hold back the stars? Can you restrain Orion or Pallades? Can you ensure the proper sequence of seasons or guide the constellation of the bear with her satellites across the heavens? Do you know the laws of the universe and how the heavens influence the earth? Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct it? Who gives intuition and instinct? Who is wise enough to number all the clouds? Who can tilt the water jars of heaven? When everything is dust and clods, can you stalk prey like a lioness to satisfy the young lion's appetite as they lie in their dens or lie in wait in the jungle? Who provides for the ravens when their young cry out to God as they struggle up from their nest in hunger? Mm. This is God basically telling Job that you, you don't have a clue yeah <laughs> and and therefore you need to rely on me for wisdom i mean he's he's it's it's um and and this isn't there's a there's a chapter where uh and i didn't find it in this reading here but there's a chapter where job just talks about how wise God is and the total wisdom of God and how it is, uh, you know, he's, he's there with his three quote unquote friends who are telling him, you must have really done something bad for God to lay all this stuff on you. And, mm. <laughs> yeah. Assuming it's from God, just like the insurance companies do, they call it act of God. So I, I think they should get a Christian attorney and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't God's character. He wouldn't do something like this. Yeah. You know, why blaming God about all this? Yeah, I always when I when I worked for the big corporation that I used to work for, and we had to go through contracts. There's always a paragraph in there that exempted, you know, the other each other from uh, any liability when it was an act of God, and it was always never an act of God that they made more money or that they were yeah. more profitable. It was always an act of God that a tornado happened or a earthquake or a flood or something that uh what that man could not have created or done then it, it was always a disaster that uh they were protecting themselves from liability about and and you know i guess if if two people are, are working on an agreement between them and something out of either one of their controls uh, like a flood or a lightning strike or a you know whatever a tornado whatever that that happens it'd be hard for me to hold you responsible or for you to hold me responsible for the destruction that happened because of that uh it's it's just hard when we know how loving and caring god is that they put those words in there and say that you know uh except for when God destroys things, we'll, we'll agree to be responsible. But when he does it, we're not responsible. Yes, to catch all. And they also added civil disobedience because the riots, you never know when they're going to pop up nowadays. They have destruction. And it's like, who did that? Can't call it an act of God. So no. they call it disobedience. But the crowd, the anarchists are, you know, you can't make them liable because they don't have the resources. Yeah. 
It's ridiculous. Well, you want to close us out with prayer? We'll stop the recording, Tim, and then we'll just go on from there. Sure. Father God, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we thank you for the book of Proverbs that is uh, trying to give us instruction and wisdom. Lord, help us to receive and help us to yield to you, to submit to you, to obey you, to reverence you, and to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I like. I would like to add something. Go ahead. In the last three days, we have lost two good men. I would like to add a prayer for the souls of Mike Lutton and Greg Gossage. They were both fine men, and we will miss both of them. Their families will miss both of them. They were part of my life, so I ask Jesus Christ to bless in peace on their souls. May they be in heaven with you today, rejoicing and having the everlasting life with Jesus Christ, as was promised. In the Holy Spirit's name, amen. Amen.